want to call the meeting to order in Streamwood Central School District for April 26th. Uh, this evening we have uh, members not in attendance. Ms. Taylor will not be here. Uh, Mr. Mann and Ms. Kamersky I, um, may be a little late to the meeting. And with that, we have all our board members present and accounted for. With that, if you could please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Thank you, everyone. First, we have our student council representatives from Columbia High School. We have Ryan and Emma. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so, student oh, first of all, welcome back from April break, everyone. Nice yes, to you too. Here. Long one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, student council is starting to plan for the end of year events. The student-run Columbian Awards Ceremony will be held on the morning of June 10th. Uh, we chose this date so that we could minimize disruption to regular uh, instruction as most seniors will be le leaving early that day anyway to get ready for prom which is held that evening and then the evening award ceremony will be held the following tuesday on june 14th um, the student council will also be setting up elections for the class officers and executive officers that will take place in the coming months and this saturday april 30th the columbia ptso is hosting the snowball dance which is a little late this year but i'm so excited <laughs> that we're having it and they're having a spirit week this week and each day is themed for a different decade awesome and that's all i have for tonight thank you very much thank you thank you Brian. thanks so much the next item on the agenda is a very special time of the year for us um volunteerism is always a a big part of our community and, and we have the special uh, privilege of recognizing many of our volunteers this evening and i'm going to turn it over to mr harkin to kick it off thank you thank you mr buono uh, board of education central administration faculty staff guests thank you for coming to columbia high school this evening we're always fortunate enough to hold the student or the volunteer recognition each year um and it is a special night like mr buono said it's great to hear about what people do for our community and to be recognized for there's a lot of countless hours of volunteering and hard work and behind the scenes that not everybody gets to see and not everybody is aware of um, and it's just a special night and we really enjoy hosting it here at columbia high school our first presenter of the evening is the principal from bell top elementary school mr martin Mahar. <laughs> that's my applause marty <laughs> <laughs> You'll take a few claps, all right, Marty? <laughs> Not as tall as you, Mr. Harkin. All right, thank you for the introduction. Before I start, I'd like to call up um, my Bell Top volunteer, <laughs> um, Heather James. Come on up and stand next to me while I do this. All right, here we go. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to recognize Heather James tonight. Heather is a bell top parent whose son Harrison is in third grade. It's right over there. <laughs> we see Heather on a weekly basis volunteering, especially in the library. Heather has been instrumental in organizing and running the fall and spring book fair she has volunteered to assist students and teachers during activities in many of our classrooms. During this year's Olympic season, she created winter Olympic bingo cards <laughs> for our school-wide bingo game, and she also donated prizes for the students. Heather is an active PTO member and has helped out at Belltop as a secretary, a monitor, a teaching assistant, and many, many other things. Thank you, Heather, for all that you do for the Bell Top community. I appreciate your volunteerism. You get to pick a cookie. <laughs> no gifts. Any of the volunteers as they get introduced are welcome to say a few words if you'd like. Ms. Rams, can we get a picture? What are we gonna do at the end? All right, very good, thanks. And this is um, certificate. Thank you very much.
And next up for the recognition is Donald P. Sutherland, Mr. Alvey. I'm going to put it back where it belongs. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to welcome up Mrs. Poole, Mrs. Barbara Poole. We've known each other a long time. When I was a newbie here uh, 18 years ago in the school district, uh, Barb was uh, one of our music teachers at the Donald P. Sutherland School, and it's come full circle where now she volunteers uh, in our library two days a week with Mrs. O'Connor. And uh, she's an incredible support to our library program, and I know Mrs. O'Connor couldn't do it uh, without her. Uh, in fact, that was her quote. I do not know what I would do without her. <laughs> Barb is, like I said, a retired music teacher uh, at, at, uh, at DPS in Green Meadow. Um, the one failure that she ever had was when she tried to teach me some guitar chords on a 12 <laughs> string. Other than that, everything was great. I loved working side by side, side with, with, with Barb. Um, when, when Barb is in our, our school for those two days, she does a, a, lot, of the, a lot of support for Mrs. O'Connor. Um, book checkouts, organizing files, all the things that, that Mrs. O'Connor needs for support. But the, one of the greatest things about Mrs. Poole is her love for our kids at our school. And, you know, uh, having been away from our school for a number of years, to know she knows all the kids' names, gets to know them, uh, really hears who they are as children and how much they look forward uh, to seeing her. I, Mrs. O'Connor just said how the you know kids were wondering where you know is Mrs. Poole coming in today you know <laughs> so they really look forward to the time uh, with her at our school. Um, it's just it's a privilege to be able to honor someone that I got to work side by side with uh, in a different capacity. So Barb, thank you so much for for helping our kids and uh, keeping our school community to be the great place that it is. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Here's your certificate of appreciation. Here's your water bottle. <laughs> and you can have a cookie too. <laughs> Thank you very much, Barb. At this time, I'd like to welcome up uh, principal of the Green Meadow Elementary School, Mr. Daniel Garib. <laughs> Mr. Mahar, I'm going to lower the microphone to make you feel a little better. <laughs> I think next year we do this by height. Uh, I would like to invite up our PTO president, Nicole Chrisanda. I have to be honest, this is bittersweet. It's an absolute privilege to recognize Nicole. Uh, but I'm also dreading the end of her time at Green Meadow. I tell her that all the time as recently as this morning. Nicole is currently the president of our PTO. Uh, she's serving as her sixth year as the head of that organization. Prior to that, she served in uh, many other leadership roles. She is just a constant presence at our school. She's involved in just about every event that we have Either she is often the face of it and on the front lines, but often she's also behind the scenes. She's not one that likes pats on the back, even though you're getting them tonight. She's humble. She doesn't always like the recognition. Uh, Green Meadow would not be the school that is without Nicole. Uh, Natalie is here this evening, who's currently in eighth grade, Julia, who's in fifth grade, and I wanted to keep her back, you know, <laughs> just, you know, so we could stay, but I, I don't think that wasn't going to go over too well. Um, and Gary is here. Uh, the whole family has really been involved for many, many years. Uh, as you know, last year we were nominated as a National Blue Ribbon School of Excellence. That was a very arduous process to complete that application. 
uh, and they encourage the school and the community working together. It was a plus that our PTO president is also an English teacher. <laughs> She put a lot of time and effort into that application, which ultimately was successful uh, a lot because of you, Nicole. Uh, so on behalf of the entire Green Meadow community, thank you so much for all you have done. Uh, we really appreciate it. You will be missed, but you always have a home at Green Meadow. Thank you. Yeah, they took it, yes. <laughs> this time I'd like to invite Mr. Grignan up from the Janae School. Good evening, everyone. I think that's good. Um, this year, I'm pleased to announce that Janae has two volunteers that we would like to recognize for their service and dedication to our school community. Janae, Janae's volunteers this year are Mrs. Jessica Sweeney and Mrs. Jen slagan Baberski. Can I ask you to both come up here with me? Okay. I'm going to start with Mrs. Baberski. Um, I've had the privilege of knowing Jen now for three years since her son Owen entered Janae as a kindergartner when I made the transition from Goff Middle School down to Janae. She's a devoted mother of three children, Owen, Austin, and Ethan, and over the past three years she's become an integral part of every student's day even without knowing it, including the staff here at Janae. Jen plans and sets up something that people may overlook, but every day is something that the kids and the staff look at when they come into the school, which is our Janae birthday board. If you ever walk through the main hallways of Janae, you'll see that it's a beautiful display organized by you on your own time uh, with your own materials that you go out and you purchase. And it's something that the kids and the staff look at every day that reminds us as to why we're in the building, we're there working with kids, and we should be able to celebrate them each and every single day. Um, she's taken that, over, that role over for now the, the past three years that I've been there. I've seen parents and students alike take in the birthday board each day on those special occasions when it's a child's birthday. I've even seen children and staff members engage in a countdown each morning as students arrive when they know it's the, when they know it's the birthday month of that particular child and they count on eight more days, Mr. Grigna. I know, bud, I see it, it's right there every day. And then they know they get to come to the main office to get a birthday prize. So <laughs> it's really important. Overall, this small, well, seemingly small impact has had a tremendous impact on the overall Janae mentality for the morale of the students and also the staff. In addition to being a full-time mom and finding the time to come to Janae and set up that board each month, Mrs. Baberski is also an attorney for New York State Senate and works with a local firm here in East Greenbush as well. And she's also actively involved in the Unity House and Two Hearts, One Soul, which are organizations who work with uh, victims of domestic violence. I also want to point out that Jen is also a graduate of East Greenbush Central School District. Um, I promised her I would leave out the dates. And she began to, and she began her educational journey as a Green Meadow student, and then attended Janae as a fifth and sixth grade student and continued to golf in Columbia thereafter. Jen, on behalf of everyone at Janae, the parents, myself, and the staff, we want to thank you for your continued tireless efforts in making Janae a great place for our kids. Okay. Jen, here's your certificate. Right. And you can take a cookie as well. <laughs> All right. Next, I'd like to welcome up Mrs. Sweeney. <clears throat> Fun fact about Mrs. Sweeney as well is that both of our volunteers are also are both graduates of Columbia High School and the East Greenbush Central School System. She first started her half day, or sorry, she first started her kindergarten at Red Mill Elementary School and then continued switching over both to Green Meadow, which is a similar uh, pattern, um, and then went to Janae for fifth and sixth grade, Golf Middle School, and then to Columbia High, High School, where she graduated. Mrs. Sweeney is an active member of the Janae's PTO and school community dating back to 2016. She has worn several hats during that time, including being the vice president and is currently the secretary of our, school, our school's PTO. 
I had the pleasure of working with Mrs. Sweeney for the past three years, and I can share that she continues to go above and beyond for the students of Janae. If, if she is not in a role that she can uh, for, for the PTO, she can be found at Janae on the floor, on mats or uh, carpet swatches, <laughs> helping out in first grade and kindergarten classrooms. And additionally, she's also a district sub, um, which I know she subs around the district, but I think she's got a partial spot for Janae, right? Okay. <laughs> um, and she's also a proud mother of two boys, James, fifth grade, and Joseph in first grade. And she's also on top of planning any type of special organizational treat or event for our students at Janae. I've seen her go around and ask teachers what they may need and also coordinates with the rest of the PTO and coordinating wonderful events for our kids, including movie night and then recently our May calendar, which is going to be, a, which is huge. Um, our raffle calendar. But one of the most important projects that I see that she has put her time and soul and effort into is the Janae's Explore and Grow program. This program is run by parent volunteers who plan and organize individual learning sessions for our students. This takes place after school on parents' own time and also can run from a range of topics such as making slime to project adventure to Zumba lessons for students and also to introductions into learning a second language. This is all run and coordinated by Mrs. Sweeney, who has overseen upwards to up, up to 150 students staying after school with parent volunteers. This year alone, Janae had, had held a total of three Explore and Grow sessions, which is a total of 12 days. Each session is, is, is four days, so two weeks. When asked why she enjoys working with Explore and Grow, Mrs. Sweeney shared with me that the reason I do explore and grow is because when I was in elementary school in Green Meadow, I don't remember much about the classrooms, but I do remember almost every minute about the after school enrichment program that I did. I remember learning the basics about cooking and measuring, sign language, jazzercising, and during after school, or all during the after school enrichment program. And she wanted to make sure that her kids had the same after school enrichment programs that she did at her age. So from all of us at Janae, and I know you're going to continue to work with us as, as in the form of PTO, but thank you very much for your continued service. And then I just want to say in closing, while I've not spoken directly to either Mrs. Sweeney or Mrs. Baberski about this, I believe that they, um, that they both reside in the East Greenbush Central School District because of their fond memories and great educational experiences that they, that they both had as children and wanted to share the same experience with their, with their own children. Janae's volunteers are graduates of the community and continue to reside in East Greenbush and give back whenever possible. Because of people like Jessica and Jen and their dedication to the district, we are, we are, we are able to provide so much to our students and that's for all of our volunteers here. So thank you on behalf of all of us. And I'd like to welcome up principal of Red Mill School, Mrs. Helen Scalacci. Thank you, Mr. Grignan. Well, we have a wonderful volunteer from Red Mill here with us tonight. So I'm going to invite Amanda Skepkowski up here with me. And I think Amanda's accompanied here tonight by her two awesome children, Kendra and Landon. <laughs> I think her husband's with her and her mom back there. Awesome. That's great. So the whole Skepkowski crew is here tonight. And Amanda, I'm so happy to celebrate you tonight. I'm sad, too, because Amanda has been with Red Mill for such a long time. She's volunteered her time at Red Mill for eight years. Um, she's taken on so many leadership roles on our PTO executive board, including being the secretary of our PTO and the treasurer. Amanda is really a dynamo. When I say a dynamo, she's like no other person I know. She's full of energy. She's full of wonderful ideas. She's got amazing follow through, um, unbelievable organizational skills. She gets things done. If I need something done, she's the go-to gal. Um, Amanda has spearheaded so many of our cherished Red Mill traditions to ensure successful and fun events for our kids and our families. Some of these events include our school dances, our holiday breakfast with Santa, um, which, you know, Santa, Mr. Simons has been good friends with Santa over at Red Mill School in the past. She's done our bowling, our grandparents and special friends day, our movie nights, 
Um, she's also been a lead on our Tools for Schools, organizing and de designing our fifth grade t-shirts and um, gathering those fifth grade memories and things for our yearbook. Usually in a PTO, there's about, I don't know, 30 committees or events that have to be chaired. And, you know, it would be great if you could have 30 people each take one. Well, Amanda, Miss Energizer Bunny, takes on at least um, a third to half of those all on her own. So she's amazing. During our COVID shutdown, her leadership shined through, um, not only during the shutdown, but last year during our hybrid model. She was right there when we needed a shot of spirit or some fun and smiles, keeping our community together and connected and finding smiles through all those challenging times that we went through together. She organized a really cool snowman building contest during the winter time last year when the families were at home and um, kids made great slideshows of their, of their snowmen. Amanda put it all together to music and everybody loved it. She did a really awesome March Madness contest um, during the shutdown with a minute to win it style tournament for our teachers. She had us doing all these hilarious contests <laughs> that were super embarrassing for teachers and principal, <laughs> but really fun for the students to watch. So they all got a big kick out of that. Amanda is really one of a kind. She's a valued and special and appreciated volunteer. Not only that, more importantly, she's just a top notch person and we're gonna miss her next year. So thank you. Fancy, fancy certificate. Hopefully we spell your name right because it's not easy. There's your treat and you can pick out a cookie. Maybe Kendra and Landon have a special one in mind up there. <laughs> okay, thank you. Next up on our list, I didn't bring my cheat sheet here. I think it's Mr. Harkin. Is Mr. Harkin next? Oh, Miss Barker, sorry. Thank you. Good evening. So tonight it is my honor to recognize Marion Ruhan uh, for her dedicated service to Goff Middle School. Please come on up, Marion. As many of you know, Marion has been a um, employee of Goff, um, not only Goff Middle School, but also, also Columbia High School as a uh, as a science teacher. She retired two years ago. Upon her retirement, when she sat down to tell me that she was retiring, um, she said to me, I, I would still like to be involved in the school community. I said, that is terrific, Mary, and please get on our sub list. She said, well, that's not really what I had in mind, <laughs> to my dismay. Um, so at that time, we talked about her involvement. As she as a teacher at Goff Middle School, she was involved in our school backpack program. At Goff Middle School, we have food donated to us from the food bank, and we provide students with backpacks full of food every Friday. And Marion has been very instrumental in helping us execute that program while a teacher at Goff, but also as a retiree. Marion has volunteered since her retirement to come in each week to make sure that all the food that has been no donated is put away in our food pantry closet that we have. And she also takes the time to organize the food and fill each backpack so we can ensure that each child on Friday um, goes home with food and we can ensure that um, they come back Monday uh, knowing that they've been fed very well over the weekend. Um, Marion is a very given person. I've known her both per personally and professionally, and this is no surprise that she's continuing to give back to our school community and helping those um, that deserve um, much deserved help that they do need. So I want to thank you, Marion. I know that Mr. Eggleston has also mentioned that you have gone and picked up bread for us when we were not delivered the bread that we needed for our backpack programs, and she's volunteered her time and energy to go pick up that bread for us. Um, she's willing to bring back the bins for us or pick up food as necessary. So without her, um, you know, certainly it would require some more hands on our end, but knowing that she's taking care of that for us and executing that, that for us has, has been very um, appreciative, and I want to thank you so much for that. Thank you, Marion. Uh, let's get you uh, fed. No, I'm going to get <laughs> Thank you. Thank, thank you, Marion. Oh, here's your certificate. <laughs> For Columbia High School, our Ron, recognition tonight is for Angel Schweigert, our PTSO president. 
Unfortunately, Angel couldn't be here like any mother. Her daughter was accepted into the Disney intern program and had to move in this week. So she's, as we speak, driving her daughter to Disney World to check her in to be working there for the next six months. But um, Angel's been an amazing PTSO president for the last four years. She is going to be leaving me. So if anybody's looking for a job, I know some of you I heard are graduating from the elementary school. <laughs> willing to take you on up here at the high school. Um, she was the second PTSO president that I've ever worked with here at the high school. Uh, she literally does anything that we need for students at the drop of a hat. It's great to have the power that she has. She's an amazing fundraiser. Um, we have cornhole tournaments. We have spirit sales. We've done umbrellas. We've done everything to raise the money. And she immediately gives it back to the students. We paid for prom tickets, tuxedos, senior portraits, um, tuition waivers for kids that don't have the money to get their credit from Hudson Valley and SUNY Albany. And she never says no. Uh, anytime that we, we have a, we, the money gets low, she reminds me that we need to have an ice cream social. Linda, you didn't hear that. <laughs> or another event and we raise the money and we give it right back to the students. She also provides for our faculty and staff. She does teacher recognition breakfast uh, at the beginning of the year and a lunch appreciation during teacher week. She's an amazing woman. She'll be really missed when she leaves, uh, but her daughters are come first and we, we're sorry she's not here this evening, but I really like to thank Angel for all her work and dedication the last four years. And at this time, I'd like to bring Mr. Leonard up. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of odd. My uh, volunteer of the year for mine is my wife, Mary. Mary, come on up. She hates all this stuff. And I was threatened again, so if I walk home, please pick me up. Um, before I begin, um, as she reminded me, I'm getting pretty old as I taught Jen VC and Jen Slagan uh, at Jen and Green Meadow. So I'm not getting old. It was just, you know, you know, it is what it is. And obviously I go way back with Barb Poole, uh, you know, 30 plus years. And Mrs. Sweeney, if you need someone to help you with Zumba, Mr. McHugh's your man. So. Um, you know, obviously Mary and I have been together a long time when I became athletic director. She became full time into our athletic uh, culture here. Um, she has done everything from their Columbia Athletic Facebook to Columbia Twitter to taking over 500 senior night photos for all of our kids. Um, she's attended with me willingly and excitedly to over 10,000 athletic games. We've traveled the state. We've traveled to many states to watch our teams and our kids play. Um, I used to be the cool Mr. Leonard, like all the kids would gravitate towards me. They all gravitate towards her. She's cool. Um, we go to games. They kind of, oh, there's Mr. Leonard. Let's go talk to Mrs. Leonard. Um, but she's, she's done an amazing job with, with everything, athletics and everything for our school community. Um, there's so many things that we need that are kind of behind the scenes athletically. A coach will say, hey, I need something, and she'll buy it. Um, and she does. she's done that for years and years and years. Um, Obviously, I'm retiring. She's retiring with me uh, in <laughs> September. Um, but it's it's been our pleasure to do this. She does a great job. Um, I'll tell you a couple quick stories. One is uh, <laughs> I'm definitely walking. <laughs> definitely. Uh, three years ago, we had a senior night. I think it was girls soccer, and like I literally talked to her for five minutes that one day, as most days are. And I get this girls soccer. She's taking photos. She starts crying. I'm like, I didn't even say anything to her. I'm like, I can't believe she's upset at me. So the soccer game starts. I told my, I go, I gotta go home. I gotta go check on her. I get home. She's crying. She goes, That's it. I can't do any more senior nights. I get too close to the kids, and she does. And so like, wherever we go, restaurants, we, you know, we're very lucky. We get invited to a lot of weddings. And so, hey, is Mary coming? Or you know, <laughs> uh, chocolate? You know, I'm like, you know, the backseat guy, but. She's done a great job, and uh, we've had a lot of fun over our 20 years doing this. Um, so, thanks, bud. <laughs> You're a cookie, sure. No. Yeah, she wants to. No. She's a little shy. <laughs> she doesn't want you to have a cookie either. <laughs> Don't tell Mary cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, congratulations to all our recipients this evening.
Mr. Bino, if it was all right with you, we'd like to take a quick pause to get a picture with everybody and then we can yeah. resume our meeting. Absolutely, Mr. Simon. Mm -hmm. I just want to, on behalf of the district administration, and Board of Education, and everyone in our educational community, uh, support and um, uh, reiterate everything that the principals and the administrators said about your service to the district. It is uh, really appreciated from the district level that you take the time, your personal time, to give to our kids, to help and support our staff. And what's really impressive is uh, that you do so with a sense of joy, uh, love for the children, and love for the district. And it really helps to build the sense of community that we enjoy here in the East Greenbrier School District. So on behalf of everybody in our educational community, thank you for what you do. We wanna take a little bit of a pause from the meeting and take a nice photo and just extend our personal appreciation to all that you've done for the district. Thank you. Excellent. We're gonna do the photo right back here at the back wall. Mr. Adam, our director of communications, is gonna take that picture. So we could have our recipients head back there. Thank you. All right. So we'll take a uh, five minute recess or so and uh, let folks take some pictures. All right, we'll continue with our board meeting. Thank you again for all the uh, volunteers, friends and family who came in this evening to our principals for recognizing those special volunteers who are one of many of the volunteers across the district that uh, give back to the community, either as uh, who come back and as retired folks or just community members with children or just want to uh, maybe graduates and live in the community and are helping out. So again, thank you very much to everyone who's a volunteer in our district and special recognition to those who are rec uh, recognized this evening. Moving on our agenda, we will have the approval of the draft minutes for April 12th, 2002. Um, Ms. Kennedy and Ms. O'Brien were not here this, for that meeting. Okay. Any questions or comments on the minutes? Because we still have a quorum. Seeing none, I need a motion to approve the minutes. John, second. Kathleen, all those in favor? All those abstaining? Jennifer and Cheryl. Got it. Okay. Approved. Next item is our board forum. I'll start on my right with Cheryl. Any? Frank? Good. Kathleen? I, I do have to add to the, the thank you for all the volunteers. Um, it's not only that they're still volunteering, it's that <laughs> a lot of them were around when my kids were here. So it's a long, long history right. with the district and we just really, really appreciate all that they bring back to our district. Thank you, Kathleen. Jennifer? John? Just uh, thank you to everyone and Mary, you're a saint. <laughs> 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 Duly noted. <laughs> and Michelle? Good. Okay. We'll now move to our public forum. Residents, students, employees, and business representatives of the East Greenman Central School District may address the board on matters concerning programs and or operation of the district other than matters involving personnel. <clears throat> Members of the board do not directly respond to citizen concerns during the public forum. If a response is appropriate, either the president or superintendent will contact the individual in the near future. Those persons wishing to address the board will be recognized by the chair of the meeting and should state for the record their name and address or affiliation with the district or business. While the board does not wish to infringe upon free speech protections, it must be stressed the visitor's forum is not deemed to be an open forum. The board president will conduct the forum for the early and efficient operation of board business. In addition, any remarks which may be considered defamatory or stigmatizing or prohibited will be declared out of order. All comments shall be limited to five minutes. Is there anyone who'd like to address the board at this time? Yes. That's perfect. I heard we had a special uh, speaker this evening. Just so we can, because uh, we're streaming it. Thank you. Yep. Hi, I'm Marie McBride. I'm at 30 Robin Lane Rensselaer. Um, I'm with the All Sports Club at Columbia High School. And I just want to let the board and the community know that we are having our 20th Hall of Fame, uh, Athletic Hall of Fame on May 14th at Franklin Terrace in Troy, sorry. <laughs> so we managed to, in 2020, have a vote, in 2021, have a banquet, and in 2022, have both a vote and banquet. So it's 20 years strong. We nice. have some uh, gifts for the board for our 20th anniversary. I'd like to invite you all to come. It's a wonderful evening. You will not regret coming. 
We are inducting seven members into our Hall of Fame, five mm -hmm. athletes and two coaches, four male athletes, one female. A few, um, two of the athletes are playing professionally, I believe. Um, it's, it's a great group of people and it is a wonderful evening. So I hope you uh, can make plans to attend that on May 14th. Also, the All Sports Club is dedicating to enhancing all sports in the district. And with that spirit, I think I received a text message, a phone call, and an email from Mike Leonard all in one day. So I knew that was <laughs> something. Um, we decided to donate $10,000 to the district to put towards your new scoreboard. Awesome. And we're so Thank happy you. we can do that for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. The gift is just wonderful. And, um, you know, I have an opportunity to attend a few of those athletic hall of fames. And I know Mr. Leonard sounds like we had something really special plan for this, uh, for May 14th. And it's, uh, some wonderful list again of, mo of folks to be recognized. More swag. <laughs> All right. Lots of lottery. Very good. So, in just a few weeks. So thanks everybody. Appreciate it. And thank you so much for the donation. Anyone else like to address the board this time? No. Okay. Seeing none, we'll move forward. The next item on our agenda is the reports and presentations of the superintendent of schools. Mr. Simons. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Bruno. Uh, I'd like to ask Mr. McHugh as our assistant superintendent for curriculum instruction to present the proposed professional development plan for next school year, 2022-23. Uh, before Mr. McHugh begins, I just want to say a couple of words about uh, Mr. McHugh and the job that he has done planning professional development. Uh, several years ago, uh, as part of a re administrative reorganization, uh, we moved professional development under the assistant superintendent for curriculum. And we did that not only because we thought professional development uh, would support continued refinement and implementation of new standards, new approaches to curriculum, but we had a bet that Mr. McHugh would do an extraordinary job. And uh, without saying, uh, since Jim has taken over the oversight of professional development, we see far more staff involved in the planning of our professional development initiatives. There is much better alignment between the board's goals, the district's priorities, and the professional development activities reflected in the calendar. Um, Jim has also been a very strong leader in the sense of being in tune with what is happening at the national, state, and regional level. Uh, and we are often looked to now as a district as uh, setting the standard for professional development uh, and other districts call us and ask us what we're doing about various topics. So this may be Jim's last opportunity to prevent, present the professional development plan as he's retiring at the end of the year. And I just want to say thanks from the bottom of my heart, Jim, for the great job you've done with PD. start with a brief look back um, during 2021, 2022. So this data is fresh as of April 11th. Uh, there were 129 district initiated professional development sessions this year, meaning that we created those sessions. So 129 sessions uh, from, from when we started back at the end of August until uh, April 11th. Uh, just to give you the magnitude of how many professional development sessions are attended. <clears throat> As of April 11th, there were 5,926 requests for professional development within our district. Um, I break it right down, 4,388 sessions were completed. As of April 11th, there were over 1,000 that were in progress. And then I, I just track the data, how many sessions are dropped, uh, how many sessions are denied. 
There were 29 professional development sessions denied, and typically those denials are because it's not technically professional development. It's really a work-related responsibility and not professional, an example of professional learning. Um, so that just gives you a, a brief look at what was accomplished this year. <clears throat> this is our East Greenwich Professional Development Committee. Um, you know, and it's really important just to uh, take note that um, you know, it is representative of all seven buildings and all district personnel, both instructional and instructional support staff. Um, and we do assess staff needs, identify a list of annual uh, objectives that tie staff training to student performance and teacher effectiveness. Uh, it's a very focused approach. Our East Greenbush Professional Development Committee is 31 members strong this, this current year. Uh, just to give you uh, a look at how challenging it is because there's a lot of ideas and a lot of priorities are articulated uh, for professional development but we really are limited and it requires us to really think outside of the box we have a full day of professional development this year on september 2nd another full day on september 8th and then we had a half a day on october 1st and a half a day on march 25th um, so the half days are complicated because our district functions on five different bell schedule, schedules. So there's a contractual start time and end time to the day. Um, what really has been a plus and a takeaway from if there's anything from the COVID pandemic is that the power of virtual uh, professional development. So that eliminates the travel time if we're hosting a professional development session at one of the buildings, typically Columbia High School, we have to wait until people travel from their home school to get to that building. Um, so, you know, there is there is a plus between that virtual um, uh, and asynchronous offering. So, you know, we have, uh, you know, tremendous uh, employees and uh, sometimes they have things in their personal life outside of the workday. They have young children at home. Asynchronous opportunities have been well received. You know, they get their family situated. They have dinner and they can uh, take advantage of the asynchronous professional development at a time that works best for them. So uh, those were some kind of takeaways and thinking outside of the box. When we look at next year's calendar, it's the same thing. We have two full days of professional development, two half days of professional development. One of the full days of professional development is the Quest R3 Regional Professional Development Day. We are typically the host for that event and uh, we will be participating in that. So again, there's a lot of challenges when people start to say, I think we should focus on this, I think we should focus on that. We have professional development that's very specific towards uh, specific groups of our instructional staff and non-instructional staff. Um, it gets to be a little bit of a challenge. Um, I just wanna go through some of the sample offerings uh, You know, this year. We uh, really focused on culturally responsive teaching for multilingual learners this year. You'll see a lot, I'm not gonna read down the list, but you'll see a lot of sessions that were around trauma sensitive uh, classroom, social emotional learning, Renaissance training, our new uh, universal screener that we are now uh, using K through eight. We've had over two dozen professional development sessions um, under Renaissance to very well organized by our RTI coordinator, Lisa Mahar. She delivered a lot of that professional development. You know, when I say we're limited to those four days, Lisa has gone into those buildings and she's worked uh, during the academic day with uh, faculty uh, to help, um, you know, the process of implementing Renaissance STAR. So over two dozen sessions with that. Um, again, managing students with complex trauma Ed Law 2D, which is an annual requirement. We do that up front. Our law firm provided that professional development this year. We had a lot of sessions focused on mental health, cultural bias, and culturally responsive teaching and learning. You'll see LexiKeet language services. We wanna make sure that when we have new employees that join us, that they're aware that we have that translation service, how to utilize it, um, ways that we could utilize that. So there's professional development in that as well. Uh, some other ones, just kind of walking through uh, some of these quick, is uh, Power Teacher Pro. Uh, that's through PowerSchool, which is her student information system. All of our report cards are now electronic. They're through our student information system. So we had professional development on that. Project-based learning, that was offered through Tech Valley High School. And that is an opportunity for us because we send students to Tech Valley High School that we receive uh, some professional development from them, and we utilize that for project-based learning. K-12 
chemical hygiene training, that's an annual requirement. Um, guided reading with English language learners, science strategies with English lang language learners, uh, tech talks. So um, these were done by Questar 3 BOCES. Uh, they've been an excellent partner as well as model schools for us uh, in professional development. But the tech talks were provided by Stephanie Carbone through uh, model schools. And those were uh, one hour for our six through 12 staff and then one hour for our K-5 staff. Uh, she delivered tech talks on Seesaw, Cami, Google Classroom, uh, but you'll see some other ones up there just pointing them out, uh, supporting students with dyslexia, seizure first aid, and we had some sessions under diversity, equity, and, and inclusion. Um, just a, note, a couple more that I just want to highlight, poverty's effect on students, and we made a really strong effort to start to focus on the science of reading. So you'll see a couple of uh, PD sessions in there, five ways the science of reading should guide early literacy instruction. And then we had a book study this year. Uh, all of our AIS teachers, all of our early intervention uh, specialists participated in a book study, six ways to bring the science of reading into the balanced literacy classroom. All of our K-5 principals participated in that book study. And then our kindergarten teachers, all of our grade one and all of our grade two before the end of that school year. Um, just recently in March, we ran two sections under restorative practices. One was run by Mediation Matters. The other one was run by the New York State Office of Mental Health. Um, you know, challenges and best practices related to PD. You know, I, I pointed out the two full days or the two half days because we are limited to the number of days and we have multiple needs and multiple requests. We encourage employees to seek out relevant opportunities to request our CASDA, the Greater Capital Region Teacher Center. And we continue to offer a menu of professional development sessions for employees to select from. One of the things that we have focused on is that we have that turnover. We have many faculty members and non-instructional members that retire, and we have to be cognizant of that and make sure that we continue to offer professional development. It's not one and done that there's a cycle for those opportunities for people to receive that training, uh, you know, getting traction, right? And that's really important that we identify our priorities. And I'm a firm believer in avoiding those one hit wonders. You bring somebody in one time to present and we're not getting a lot of traction. It's gotta be embedded, it's gotta be ongoing um, and repeated sessions. So that's where, you know, really identifying those priorities uh, as value. Something that I am really proud of is the participation rate in professional book studies. Um, amazing. So we, we've run several book studies and uh, some of these are done using outside uh, resources. Again, through Questar, we've used Karen Kohler, um, but even our own folks will run those bu uh, book studies and, and the participation is amazing. We ha we've had upwards of 60 people participate in a in a book study. So um, those have been beneficial. Participation is great. They're reading on their own. They're getting together to have that professional conversation. Um, and those have been a hit. Variety and delivery. So synchronous, asynchronous, in-person, virtual. Again, offering that menu of things that work for folks. Um, you know, and I mentioned the use of outside providers and uh, identify and tap our own in-house experts. So. Um, we have folks that deliver P PD to uh, their colleagues all the time, and um, some of our best presenters are our own people. So being able to recognize it and being able to top those folks and take advantage of their talents. Looking ahead, 22-23, uh, we identified some priorities. Priority number one is continue to work to enhance our district's response to intervention framework, develop, update our multi-tiered approach to identify students with learning and behavior needs, you know, through ongoing data collection, intervention, assessment of progress and revised practice. Our RTI data teams will be able to make recommendations for continued intervention, accommodations and services that will decrease academic and behavior challenges and improve student success. So RTI is one of the district's priorities for professional development next year. Priority two, the district will continue to emphasize respect and the support and increased understanding of all cultures, languages, and traditions, striving to ensure that all students have an equitable opportunity to learn, uh, targeted professional development in the, in the area of diversity, equity, and inclusion. 
um, cultural bias training, global awareness, cultural competencies. Um, so that's priority two. Priority three, continue to work to increase staff's awareness and preparedness in working with and best supporting diverse student populations that our East Greenbrook Central School District serves. So um, ENL, having a percentage of your professional development under English language learners uh, is a requirement. We have met the waiver that our percentage of students, ENL students in our district is under 5%. Um, but at, at a point at some time, at some time um, we may not be able to file that waiver. And it's just good practice to make sure that some of our professional development is uh, geared towards serving our English language learners. So that is a, is a pri priority. And the last one is continue to work with local law enforcement agencies to increase employee and community awareness on best practices regarding school safety. Uh, so we've looked to implement craze training for all of our employees on one of our opening days next year. We also um, have worked with the East Greenwich Police Department to discuss craze training for our Columbia High School students. So there's some of those sessions that aren't appropriate um, for all of our students, but are a good fit for others. Vaping, uh, dangers of vaping. And again, some of these sessions will be for our employees. Some of them will be for our students and some of them will be for our community members. So. Jim, could you just uh, define craze for us? Yeah, it is, uh, you know, I should have wrote that down, but it's, <laughs> I think it's critical response. So it's any kind of an emergency situation, right. um, you know, that it could happen time. in school. So any kind of school violence and how to respond uh, to it. So unfortunately, um, you know, that's a reality. We yep. know uh, back from our own experiences back in 2004. Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, I think we led the area after uh, we went through that uh, situation for ourselves. Over time, you get a little complacent, and we want to make sure that um, you know it's, it's always on the minds of all of our employees, and we know what to do in in case of an emergency. Okay. So, thank you. Yep. Um, and that is it. Unless there's any questions, I'll get back to you on what CRAZE stands for. I, I do have that written down somewhere. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. I know it's safety related training. Yeah, it is it's any kind of uh, emergency response. So. Gotcha. Any, Board members, any questions? Just a tremendous amount of effort to work with the staff and to prepare them for the different and diverse needs of our school community. And, um, you know, the priorities identified spot on. And I think those will help, you know, maintain the um, level of PD that we always have in this district and invest in our staff to make sure that they're um, prepared and have the opportunity to be prepared for anything that comes at them. Like you said, whether it's English language learners, safety, um, diversity and equity, inclusion, and things like that, that um, this ever-changing world we need to be prepared for. And uh, it's, it's always been important to me in my role as a board member to support through the budget process and the activities of the professional development that we provide here, whether it's in-house in as well or out, out of uh, district, um, to bring the best opportunities for our staff and, and uh, so appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, and that professional development plan is on the consent agenda for board approval. Very good. Uh, if it receives board approval, it goes, it gets uploaded into the teach system. So it's Great. an annual requirement. Anybody else, John? Yeah, just a comment. Um, Jim, you, you've done a fantastic job um, since you were given this task. And having been on the board for some time now, I've watched you take professional development from a checklist of things that are required by the state and the governments to a living, breathing document with our, based on our di district's needs. And a lot of the categories aren't necessarily compelled or compensatory, but it's trending and it's trying to stay out in front of it. But uh, most importantly, you have created a living document that you can pass on as you go off into the sunset. So I really appreciate that. I'm sure Roy probably appreciates that. Um, but um, you've put a lot of energy and effort into, and you've really professionalized uh, what you and this district represent. So thank you for the job. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank Good. You. Thank you, Jim. Next item, Mr. Simon, spring concerts. Uh, yes, I'm just very happy to report to the board and the community that uh, all uh, schools, all levels, elementary, middle, and high school will be having spring concerts. 
uh, the calendar of concerts is attached to the document. Any member of the public can attend any one of our school concerts. They will all be in person this year. Um, the schedule is uh, starting the end of this week, actually tomorrow night with the strings uh, performances, both tomorrow night and Friday night. So the community is welcome, the board members are welcome, and the full calendar is available on our website uh, for anybody to take a look at and attend one of our student concerts. So nice. Great to see that. I have an answer for you. Okay. I'm ready. It is critical <laughs> response to active shooter events. And I appreciate it, Mr. Garib, for Googling or just knowing <laughs> that off the top of your head back there. <laughs> Power of the internet. Thanks, Jim. Civilian. Moving on from the uh, reports presentations, we have discussion items, pretty brief. The uh, budget information sessions, Mr. Simons did have one with the town, uh, town board. And then we have the list there, May 3rd, May 4th and 5th. The 4th is also an item on the discussion item is the, uh, the public hearing session. So those are virtual sessions that uh, will be streamed and we can attend. Um, again, a lot of times we did them in person. We were kind of amongst ourselves kind of attended uh, those areas, but if you want to log in and support the discussion on the budget, um, there are the dates. Anything to add, Mr. Simons? Uh, no, I just handed out a schedule as well. So we have a schedule, the board has a schedule okay. in front of them. And then for item B, the discussion item is the uh, the public hearing is May 4th, as I just mentioned, here at the Columbia High School, we'll meet right here. Yes. And we'll have the public hearing and we'll also have the um, board members who are running Right. Yes. Propositions, right? Yeah. We will introduce the board candidates as part of that presentation as well. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Board members, any comments? Okay. Moving on to regular business, approval of programs for resident children with disabilities. Any questions or comments on that? Need a motion to approve if not? Frank, second. Kathleen, all those in favor? Approved. Next item has to do with the Rensselaer Columbia Green County Board of Cooperative Educational Services, the election of board members. Um, Mr. Mann is still not here, so we couldn't comment on obviously that, but the uh, the board members are there. I think there's four seats yes. and four nominations um, from a variety of areas covering the, uh, looks like Columbia Green Counties primarily. Yes. Any questions and comments on the board member nominations? Seeing none, I need a motion to approve the election of the board members from Quest Arbosis. Michelle, I need a second. Frank, all those in favor? Approved. The next item is the adoption of the Quest R3 Administrative Tentative Budget for 22-23. Any comments, Mr. Simons, on this? I would just reiterate a comment that I'd made earlier uh, this year at a board meeting. Uh, Quest Arbosis has done a really good job of keeping their increases in the administrative budget uh, very, very low. Uh, the biggest areas of increase are related to the same areas that we deal with, which is post, uh, post employment benefits, retiree benefits, but yep. um, uh, Gladys and Harry and the crew over there have done an excellent job at keeping the increase uh, as reasonable as possible. Yep. And because the district has had stable <laughs> enrollment for the last couple of years and in relation to some of our other component districts in that Quest Arbosis, the uh, the larger share is coming to yes. the East Creamers District. That's correct. So, any questions or comments on the administrative budget? If not, I need a motion to approve that. John, you need a second. Jennifer, all those in favor? Approved. Next item is the 2020-2021 risk assessment report. Any comments, Linda? Thank you, Mr. Buna. Just really quickly, uh, every year uh, the district has um, a risk assessment that is performed by our internal auditor. And he takes a look at many different areas of the district, but all areas of the business office, including cash receipts, cash disbursements, accounts payable, accounts receivable, payroll, insurance. But he also looks at other areas, including transportation, food service, technology. He makes observations, he does testing, and he provides comments. And then there is a, a also a section for comments with recommendations. The comments with recommendations section uh, requires a corrective action plan by the district. I'm happy to report that there are no comments with recommendations this year. His um, main comments were focused on the transition that took place in the business office 
during the 2021 school year and his comments um, were supportive in that we maintained our internal controls and implemented compensating controls in the absence uh, of some of the positions. Um, other than that, it's a good report. Are there any questions? No. Okay. Thank you, Linda. No questions. Okay. And seeing uh, seeing none questions, then I'll have a, a motion to accept the risk assessment report. Frank, second. Kathleen, all those in favor? Approved. The next item is the summer 2022 driver education program. Any comments, Mr. Sanders? Just briefly, um, during the period of COVID, our school district has been able to maintain driver's ed uh, with approval of the state. The state has permitted uh, driver's education to continue in school districts through a different model in which we provide the classroom instruction, which is required the number of hours, but also um, we there is a process set up where parents uh, participate and submit checklists of various uh, skills and understandings that the kids need to demonstrate. We believe that this will be the last time that the state will authorize this model. And so as we go into September, we're going to have to look for a driving school again. I did speak to Mr. Tooker about that, but uh, this has been very successful. Uh, it is a fee-based uh, program where the parents pay the fee. We are striving for 24 students, but the estimates of the costs were based on a class of 20 and uh, the cost would be about $175. Uh, and uh, it was a very successful program last summer uh, and we want to continue it again this summer, but this may be the last time that we can okay. do it uh, and we're going to be looking for a, a driving partner. school okay. and a partner for the fall. Anybody still doing that? Uh, we are not aware of anybody at this point. Okay, yeah, I know it's kind of challenging. So. All right, thank you for that. I know I've heard the same thing. It's been very successful. Any questions or comments regarding the... Driver's Ed for summer? Seeing none, I need a motion to approve that. Michelle, I need a second. Cheryl, those in favor? Approved. Moving on to committee reports, we'll start with uh, Marissa. Thanks, Mr. Buno. I just want to provide a quick update. We conducted final round interviews for school lunch manager today. Um, we're going to be working on reference checks next, and um, we'll be um, providing a recommendation for hire at the second May board agenda. And um, we are conducting our athletic director interviews next week on Monday, May 2nd, and Wednesday, May 4th. And um, Mr. Dunn is joining us for those. Very good. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you, John. <laughs> of course. Linda, any reports? Thank you, Mr. Buno. We had a health insurance review committee meeting this afternoon, and it really is just a, a reminder um, to our members of the updates on the transition to the high mark formulary for prescriptions. So there were letters that went out this week to some of our members, approximately 50 of about 1,000. And um, those letters were, if, if something required a prior authorization, that if there was a change in their copay or if there was a quantity limit. So um, very few, it affected very few people. And um, in May, the end of May to early June, new cards will be going out to all of our employees and including retirees. Thank you, Linda. Any questions for Linda? Go for a smooth uh, process, right? Jim? No reports. No reports, thank you. Jeff? I have no committee reports. Okay, thank you very much. Moving on to the next item is table motions. I have none at this time. Uh, all business, board members, anything? Okay. Moving on to the consent agenda. We have items A through H. Any questions or comments on the consent agenda? Or anything you'd like to add? No. Board members, anything? All good. Seeing no questions or comments, I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. Agenda, sorry. Frank, need a second. John, all those in favor? Approved. Addendums, we have none at this time. Uh, new business, board members, anything to bring to attention of the uh, administration or the board? Nothing? Okay, great. Moving to the second public forum for this evening. Does anyone like to address the board this time? No? Okay. Board forum, I'll start on my left with Michelle. I'll sit. Okay. John? Good. Jennifer? I'm good. Good. 
Kathleen? Good. Frank? Okay. All good. And Cheryl? Uh, just want to highlight, we talked about the budget. The budget newsletter is out. looks great. I like the way it was formatted with the, uh, of course, with the 0% tax levy increase for two years in a row. It was wonderful. And then the graduation rate, which is the highest we've ever had. And then, of course, the wonderful news that we had that we were selected in the uh, kind of best of the best Times Union poll, which is, was pretty amazing to, to see that. A um, lot of information in the in the um, newsletter, which will go out. Does it go out by mail? Uh, it's being sent out. Is it sent, being sent out this week, or it has been sent? Going out okay. this week. And I do want to in the in the back we have our board candidates. Thank you, board members who are in comments, Jennifer and Michelle for running, and Emily. I think Emily's here. Hi, Emily. It's right there. Good to see you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Um, the thing too about the COVID relief funds, mental health clinic. The by the numbers, just well done. I really appreciate the effort that went into this, and and I think with uh, by Mark's help and Adam and others. I want to credit Linda's, Mark, Adam, and Linda. And Linda, work on this, yes. yeah, this is great. Yeah. Excellent. Good job. And again, once again, thank you to our volunteers um, and the recognition and the support they provide. And also want to thank the administrators for for uh, the very nice comments and for selecting those folks for those uh, recognition. Very nicely done. We do have need for an executive session for uh, purposes of to discuss matters leading to the discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person. Um, I think that's it on the executive session items. Uh, we'll also have a subject of uh, discussion regarding negotiations. And negotiations, okay. So, and we don't anticipate any bit board business after the uh, conclusion of the executive session. So I need a motion to go into executive session. Michelle, second. Frank, those in favor? Approve. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great night.